Thank you for coming today. Uh, my name is Victor Marevici, and this talk is about SpiderSense, a project that I've been working on in the last few years. But before I start my talk, uh, I want to just say a few words about who I am and uh, what I do. So I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Illinois at Chicago uh, at the uh, lab named Electronic Visualization Lab. And the research that I do is in sensory and human augmentation, wearable technologies, and augmented displays. So what this basically means is that today we are inventing the future. We are inventing how technologies are going to look like in 5, 10, or 15 years. And we are conceptualizing ideas that are not possible today because of constraints that we have, either in networking, in processing power, in batteries, etc. But once those technologies catch up, then we will be able and we will know how to build those technologies. Um, so while doing my research on um, human augmentation, one thing that I realized is that we are biologically limited to what nature gave us. We have five senses, and those senses took millions of years to develop. Um, so don't, don't expect waking up tomorrow and having one more sense. That's just not going to happen. Uh, we're going to need, again, millions of years again to get one more sense. And the five, five senses that we have are sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. So with those senses, that's how we communicate with the world. That's how we interpret what's going on around us. However, there are millions of things that constantly surround us that we cannot feel. However, uh, it may be harmful for us, like, for example, radiation. If there was radiation in this room today, you wouldn't know because it doesn't have any taste, it doesn't have any odor, it doesn't emit any sound. Similarly, vision. Vision, when we look at our world, we think we are uh, we have perfect vision, but in fact, we don't. If you look at the graph, we can only see um, just a limited um, spectrum of what's out there. However, there are a few people amongst us that possess superpowers, and, and that allows them to see, feel, and do things that we cannot do. And that's where we draw our motivation from. These people, uh, the superheroes from, from comics, they have superpowers, and they can do things that we regular people cannot do. So let's take a few examples. Daredevil. He can basically, he's completely blind, by the way, but using echolocation, he can actually see and feel what is going on around him. And he can live a normal life, and he can fight crime. Another example would be uh, Spider-Man. Even though he was a normal human, then he got bitten by a spider, and he got something that's named spider sense, and that allows him to feel incoming attacks, feel incoming dang dangers, and fight crime. Um, so thinking at all those problems, all those ideas, um, I took a class named Human Augmentics at UIC, and what we have been tasked to do was to build something that can see the inv invisible. So thinking on all those problems, one thing that we realized is that we have the superhumans, the, the, the comic heroes, and, and they can have those powers. But today, we have technology. And technology can actually sense some of those um, invisible threads. So what's missing right now is the link between technology and humans. So we can actually try and get some of those superhuman senses to us. So that's what we wanted to do. That was our idea. How can we get one of those superpowers? How can we take that using technology and add it to somebody? Um, so for example, back to the radiation example, uh, if we had Geiger counters, we could measure radiation. But how can we communicate that back to the user in a way that feels natural, in a way that's kind of like a sense? You go in a room and you kind of feel that there is radiation around you. And that's how SpiderSense came about. So what SpiderSense is, is, is a wearable that allows you to feel the environment around you. What that means is that as you walk, you can feel obstacles around you. You can feel people around you. You can feel the chairs. You can feel, um, you can feel this uh, monitor. Uh, as you can see, it has a series of uh, sensor modules, and that's what's sensing the environment. At, at the same time, there is a, a pressure feedback that applies pressure to the skin. So if we look closely, this is one of the modules. 
Uh, it has an ultrasonic sensor which works um, using echolocation. And then uh, you have a pressure arm, this one, that applies pressure to your skin. So as you get closer to an object, you, uh, more pressure would be applied, and you feel that as somebody pushing you. And as you get away, the pressure decreases. So if somebody's following you, for example, you would know. Or if you're blind and, and you are getting close to a wall, you would know again. And what uh, ties everything together, it's a controller box that we designed, and you connect all the modules, and it runs the algorithm. Um, so why, let's look now at the science behind this. Why is this actually working? Well, human augmentation builds on another concept that's named sensory substitution. Sen sensory substi substitution means when somebody has lost a sense like vision, we use other senses to channel that information. So in this example, this is a research project that uh, another group is doing, um, this um, subject is blind. Uh, she's wearing glasses with a camera, and then uh, this device, she puts that in her tongue. So initially what she feels, the, what the system does is translates video to vibration. So initially what she feels is just tingling on, on her tongue. She doesn't know what's happening, but as she wears this device, she eventually learns how to translate those messages, and she starts actually seeing a lot of su subjects uh, when asked, they say that they feel that now they see. Initially, they start recognizing objects, then they ev eventually recognize faces, uh, and they start learning uh, how to navigate the world, even though, as you can see, the resolution is really low. Each dot is a vibration uh, module. Uh, so why, why is this happening? Well, it's because of the brain. The brain, until recently, we believe that um, it stops developing at adolescence, and it does not create any new synapses. But apparently, this is wrong. New research ha has shown the brain never stops developing. In fact, uh, if you don't run and you go out for a run today, your brain is going to create new synapses because that's something new. In fact, your brain, if you can measure it, you're going to see that uh, it weighs more. Uh, so as we learn new things, the, the brain changes. And that's why we can learn a new senses. Uh, that's why we can learn new experiences. Um, so now, before I continue, a quick test. Can everybody read the uh, numbers inside those circles? Nobody? OK. Well, that's good, or bad, actually. That's bad. It means we don't have any superhumans today in the audience. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is because recently, what we have discovered is that people have, as we know, they have three cones and in their eyes, and that allows them to see color vision. Apparently, there, are, there is a really small subset of people. Uh, it's really uh, rare and uh, difficult to find them. And they have a fourth cone. What that means it, is that they can see more hues uh, of the red color, actually. Uh, so if you were one of those people, you would actually see a number in the red circle. Um, so this, this goes back to brain plasticity. What does that mean? Those people have the exact same brain like us, but they can see more colors. Why? Because they have one more cone, which allows them to see those colors. But again, the brain learned how to interpret that new uh, input channel of information, and, and now they can see more colors. And this is how um, scientists believe that uh, these people see flowers. They actually see more colors than we do. Um, back to spider sense now. Um, so like I said, Spider sense works in the principle of echolocation. We emit a pulse, and then we get a response, and we know whether there is an obstacle or not. Same principle that um, the bats and the dolphins use. So um, these are the modules. They emit a pulse. If there is an obstacle, then they get back a response, and they can measure the distance. Uh, so since this is the technical track, I'm also going to talk a little bit about how we made spider sense. Uh, so initially, when you build the prototype, you really want to see whether your idea can be implemented. You don't really care about how it's going to look like or how it's going to work. You just want to you ask, OK, can I do this? Uh, is it meaningful? So this is our initial prototype. As you can see, this is a soap box, actually. Inside it has an Arduino. And right here, uh, the uh, ultrasonic sensor uh, would go. Um, and what we wanted to see is whether we can put in the same box the, all the components and whether there will be interference, what kind of interference, and what happens when, you, when we strap this to somebody. Uh, this is our second uh, version. It looks uh, 
more closely to what we have today. Uh, this is the rangefinder, the ultrasonic sensor that measures distance from objects, servo motor, and um, this is a pin that actually punches holes in your skin. Uh, but as we found out, it's too painful, so we changed that. Uh, so that, that's what happens in prototyping. You start something, you put something together, you learn, and then you kind of continue. Uh, so let's look at some of the experiments that we did. Um, in the video that follows, you're going to see that I'm creeping behind Brian, one of my collaborators, and he's going to feel me, and he's going to turn around, this video right here. Uh, in the, and actually, there is one more. Let me go back. OK. And this one, he actually fills the wall. That's why he uh, puts his hands. In the next experiment, we want to see what happens if we take people outside. So both experiments, he's uh, blindfolded. And whether he can actually feel pedestrians and humans around him. And as you can see, whenever somebody passes by, uh, he's waving his hand. And I'm kind of making sure he's not going to die by a car or, or an accident. And now, um, in this uh, experiment, we actually wanted to see if he can be a ninja. We gave him some ninja stars, and he's blindfolded. And people are randomly attacking. And he needs to throw the ninja stars and hit the incom incoming attackers. And he's quite successful, as you can see. Now, since I don't have Spider-Sense with me, uh, I will show you a quick video of a live demonstration that we did at the Daily Planet Discovery Channel with Dan Riskin. Um, what's cool about this video is that he wanted to capture his, um, the way he's going to feel Spider-Sense for the first time. So we only did one take. So what you're going to see next is just one take, first time he's wearing and using Spider-Sense. So you can do that. Just a second. I'm feeling the one on my wrist here. As I move my hand in front of it, it's going off. That is because uh, your own hand is blocking the sensor. Ah, uh, it's a proximity sensor. Ease. OK, so you're going to walk around me, and I'm going to shoot you with silly string. I'm going to stand like a ninja. I hope that's OK, but it feels appropriate. OK. So I just spray to whichever side I feel motion coming from. It keeps coming from my chest here. Am I hitting you at all? You are, actually. Oh, nice. I nailed you. This is a fun game. <laughs> so the reason why this chest, uh, he, he said at some point that I feel my chest is because as he's moving his hand, he's actually blocking the sensor. So those are things that we need to work on in the future. Uh, so potential application is firefighters, you can imagine, or police. Uh, you can imagine you are in a smoky, low visibility environment. You want to know whether the, uh, if there is any obstacle or if there is an, any opening. Um, people who ride bicycles, uh, you can imagine now you can suddenly feel if there is a car around you and if it's creeping from behind. Um, and even driving. Um, if we decouple the sensors and put them on the sides of the car, now as you're driving, you can feel if there are cars around you. So if you have a car on your blind spot, you now you actually know. And finally, of course, blind people, uh, by embedding this technology and, and uh, designing uh, wearables for them, they can, they can feel what, what is around them and they can feel the obstacles. Uh, so as you can imagine, I presented this about two years ago. I, uh, I published this at the conference name uh, Augmented Human, and then we got a lot of press. And of course, the corporations, they noticed. So I got an email from uh, Intel, uh, from an Intel engineer, who uh, he said that he got inspired by the suit and he wants to do something similar. He asked more information. He asked about my paper. He didn't tell me what he's going to do, of course. He said, we're working on something similar. Uh, we just want to talk to you, get some more information. And then fast forward about one year, I got an email in the morning of the keynote of Intel at CES 2015 saying, hey, you should watch the keynote today. Uh, I think you're going to be really excited. So what they presented, this is actually the CEO of Intel, they presented their own version of SpiderSense. As you can see, it has six sensor modules. We have 13. Uh, and of course, they're using their own version of the depth, depth camera. Uh, I think it's called a RealSense for measuring uh, the environment, while we need um, echolocation. 
So we're really excited about that because it kind of goes back to the beginning of my talk where we, I said that we lay the foundation for future generations and for what's going to happen in five to ten years. Um, the future. So what I'm working right now is uh, to make people healthier. This is the health bar. Uh, it reminds you to uh, get up. Uh, green means you're healthy. Red means you're not healthy. You're sitting for too long, so you need to get up. Uh, I'm also working on uh, augmented reality, and uh, that's, I cannot say anything else yet. Um, and I'm working on the next version of SpiderSense. It's going to be more mobile. It's going to be lighter. Uh, and more responsive, and we will be able to do some experiments that we couldn't do with the previous version. Um, thank you, and if you have any questions, please uh, ask me.